afternoon. Welcome back to another episode of the Wits Up Weekly Grind where I drink coffee and we talk all things triathlon. Can you let me know if you can hear me a okay uh, and everything is coming across loud and clear? Um, I started off today thinking about what we we're going to talk about and I didn't think there was going to be much, but There seems to be more and more things popping up. So uh, before we get stuck into this week's episode, please just drop me a comment and let me know whether you can hear me okay or not. Sid has just said, yes, we can hear you. Thank you very much. First of all, uh, yesterday here in the Southern Hemisphere, it was Valentine's Day, February the 14th. And across the rest of the globe, it is, uh, well, I believe Valentine's Day right now as we speak. Um, although if you're in Europe and the UK, you might have tipped over to the 15th by now. I'm not too sure. I haven't got all the time zones with me, but essentially what I'm saying is happy Valentine's Day, happy Galentine's Day, or, or in the case of our household, hang on a second, happy Palentine's Day. And I mean pal, um, because these two are pals, that is not a plate of spaghetti um, with tomato sauce and pal, which if you don't know, pal is the name of dog food here in Australia, maybe across the globe, I'm not too sure. Uh, but we weren't cooking up some spaghetti and pal meatballs <laughs> for Frankie and Henry. Uh, so, I mean, we, we don't believe in the day. Um, it means nothing to us, uh, but I thought it was a cool opportunity to do a cute photo uh Sid just said Valentine's Day here in the USA not that I'm interested in it um yeah fair enough we're not interested in it all uh but speaking of loved up days or whatever today Chef Freddy and myself I was about to say celebrate um but I'm not too sure there'll be much celebrating but anyway we've been married seven years today so I put the question out there to see if anyone's got any bright ideas about what we can do to celebrate our seven-year anniversary, um, keeping in mind we are in uh, lockdown here in Melbourne. So, we've already got away with not having to plan Valentine's Day, not that we do anyway, uh, or our seven-year wedding anniversary. Although I believe he did attempt to book uh, for dinner and organise the babysitter before the lockdown. So I have to give credit where credit is due. He gets points. He didn't play the game. It's like it's like um it was a forfeit but he still won points. That's not fair. Anyway, let me know if you've got any ideas on what we can do for our 7 year anniversary. Hit me up in the comments uh and while you are doing that and having a bit of a think, let's get underway with a bit of a chat about what's happening in the world of triathlon. Sid has just said 7 years is copper and wool. Um copper and wool. Don't even know. Don't even know what you can get. Copper's quite um isn't co- copper quite expensive? I don't know. Um, I just know when they break down your computer or something, it's the copper wiring that they need. No, when I busted many a phone, many, many an iPhone, uh, they want it recycled because I think the copper wiring in it um, is, uh, yeah, it's good for them to be able to recycle. Anyway, Jordan, if you could ask uh, your husbando if that's true, is there copper wiring in Apple iPhones? Uh, that is very useful for them to recycle. I don't know. I might be making that up. Um, anyway, Nick Mallet has just said, don't ask me, I haven't had a date in nine years. <laughs> Enjoy the single life. Enjoy it. Um, I also ha- probably haven't had a date in about nine years either, to be honest. Uh, Jordan said tea kettle. As in, I'm, am I buying, am I giving him a tea kettle? Is that what you mean? Um, Lucia said picnic. Well, the day's looking, so this is what I was thinking, the day's turning out to be not so bad here. I was contemplating maybe, because we got a taco truck for our wedding, um, I was contemplating maybe organising, um, picking up some takeaway Mexican tacos and then just going to a park and sitting there and maybe a bottle of champagne, something like that. Anyways, uh, keep the ideas coming. Let me know. It is gorgeous outside, Lucia has just said. 
Um, let's move on. Now, if you haven't already, I urge you, I encourage you, and I'm pretty sure Sid would back me up here because she sent me a message earlier this morning. If you haven't listened to our Whips Up podcast that we released last week uh, with Lauren Parker, I implore you to do that. It is uh, eye-opening. It's a little bit gut-wrenching. Um, it, it's not It's not often that uh, you have someone who's really open with uh, the struggle that they go through daily. It was interesting because I went into that episode um, you know, with a bit of a bit of an idea of how it would probably, um, you know, what direction it would go. Uh, and if you don't know, Lauren Parker was involved in a cycling accident almost four years ago, which has left her as a paraplegic. But she is uh, now a para athlete, uh, and she's in the middle of attempting to qualify for the Olympics and go for three different gold medals across three different events, which includes the para triathlon uh, and two para cycling events in the uh, hand cycle division. Uh, but Lauren, uh, she, she told me that she daily is in severe pain uh, and we talk a lot around that and what that means to her um, and the brave face she tries to put on in public. Um, really interesting. Uh, if, you, if you're if you searching for a little bit of perspective, then that is absolutely um, the podcast to listen to. I actually, um, where was it? Someone sent me a message afterwards that they, they listened to it and uh, they wanted to know if there was any research going into the spinal cord injury that Lauren has got. So essentially, she's in pain in pain daily. It feels like she's being stabbed multiple multiple times um, all day, every day. Um, so someone asked me if there is any research into that specific issue, uh, which I don't know, but I'm going to follow up with Lauren. And she also asked if there's anything that the triathlon community can potentially do to help raise money and funds for that kind of research. Again, I don't know, but I thought it was a great question and it is definitely something uh, that we will reach out to Lauren about um, hopefully this week. Uh, you never know. We d I don't know. Don't know the answer to that, but we will definitely um, look into it. Um, so, yeah, once again, jump onto the Whips Up podcast. And I know I keep saying this, but I'm planning to get all those podcasts up on YouTube in good time as well. Uh, just to go back to uh, the iPhone, Jordan has just said, yeah, yes, there is copper in the iPhone, but not sure if that's what they recycle. Lots of valuable parts and it's good for recycling to return old phones to the store. Um, if you wanted a copper gift, that's a uh, copper gift. That's what I suggested. A tea kettle. Got it. Brett also likes tea. Um, okay, moving on, moving on to what's coming up. So as you know, last year, uh, last year, last week, we announced that Geelong 70.3 was postponed due to the Melbourne lockdown. So we're going to see that race take part on the 28th of March. A local race here, the two-time G Triathlon Series race was also postponed. That will take place on the 28th of February. Um, and on that same day, we will see long distance racing in Husky, which is uh, the, the famous uh, Huskisson Triathlon um, that will be supported by the PTO. So that is the first long distance race that is coming up in the coming weeks. Sorry, um, I tell a lie before that. And thank you, Sid, for the reminder. I've got a note here. Uh, Wanaka, Challenge Wanaka now is in doubt as well. That was set to take place next weekend. Uh, well, this coming weekend. Uh, but New Zealand have gone into a three-day lockdown due to a small outbreak. Um, and if you follow along uh, with Challenge Wanaka on their socials, they're up to date with everything. Uh, and they announced that as of right now, based on the uh, information from the government, um, if the race was to go ahead today, um, due to the restrictions right now, the event couldn't take place. But if the lockdown just sticks to those uh, couple of days, it will be able to take place. So the best thing to do if you are taking part in Challenge Wanaka or if you're interested to know whether Wanaka will go ahead, make sure you jump on the Challenge Wanaka 
uh, social pages or their website, but I'm sure that it will be posted uh, on their social media. So let's hope that New Zealand gets that all under control uh, within the next 48 hours. Um, then, sorry, we have got Huskerson um, after that, the weekend after that. Is anybody going to Husky? I remember racing, racing at Husky twice. Um, loved it. I raced it as a team once and also uh, just as an individual. Who do we know who is racing in Husky? Give us a yell. Let us know. It is a PTO supported event. Uh, it's great to see the PTO supporting uh, long distance racing across the world. Good to see quite a few people tuning in. Kate Somerville, who is also, uh, who is always a um, follower, always a tuning inner, <laughs> something like that. Hi, Yeni, hope you're doing well. Mel Marsh is saying that she is racing. Fantastic. Uh, Carrots has said, I wonder how realistic Geelong uh, to go ahead in March actually is. And it's a fantastic question. I don't know the answer to that. Um, according to the um, Premier's press conference this morning uh, here in Victoria, numbers are going back down again, but... <laughs> And he always gives a but. Uh, he can't predict the future and he doesn't want to settle on uh, on Wednesday being the end of our lo lockdown just in case. Uh, but yeah, who knows? if Who knows if they end up changing it from a tight stage four and then slowly start to roll things out again because they're too scared uh, to let things go back to normal. Uh, so who knows? But hopefully things settle down and stay settled down. But if this virus is as insane uh, and spreads as fast as they say, then we're going to have to keep an eye on all announcements. And of course, we'll let you know as soon as we hear anything more definite as well. Mel Marsh, good luck at Huskerson. Uh, hope that all goes well for you. It's a great event. Uh, we love the crew at Elite Energy. Uh, so we'll give them a big shout out as well. All right, I'm going to take a break just for now. Uh, oh, before I go, Kay Anderson has just said local races are taking place in South Australia, still the stands yesterday. Sprint, actually, I saw a few photos pop up there, uh, including some pictures uh, from Carrots as well. So that's fantastic news. Um, let's get on to this week's episode of Ask Our Guest. Go. Get ready to go. Oh, my God, it hasn't worked. All right, hang on a second. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, and go. Ask our Jess. All right, here we go. Let's go. First question for Ask Our Jess. Would you rather have to do the bike leg with no pedals on or do the run leg with no laces? Ah. Uh. No pedals on, you can't definitely run with laces. You can't even bike with no pedals on. I mean, I am a calamity Jane, um, <laughs> so I would definitely trip up, but I would take that over, no pedals. Can I do? This one is from Jacob Us 202 When will you be sharing Instagram stories of your new dog? A new dog? <laughs> I don't have a new dog. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> I don't have one. Somebody had messaged her saying, oh, Jess has got a new dog, but she's hiding it. I didn't That's think really you had a dog. But anyway. <laughs> no. Okay, this is from Ben underscore C underscore story. How much lasagna is too much? Asking for a friend. <laughs> um, That is such a random question. <laughs> it's never too much lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> That's did we did we talk about lasagna on the podcast? Maybe I don't think so. Did we? I mean, we should have. I can't believe we didn't talk about lasagna on the podcast. Don't worry about it, Ben. Just have as much as lasagna as you want. <laughs> okay, I like this one. This is from Blakey ninety Olympic medal or ITU World Series champion. Olympic medal. Yeah. Of the yeah Olympic medal. What yeah. if what happens if it's not a the gold medal? Yeah, I'd still take it. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, probably. Although the cash is pretty good in it for worlds, so. Hopefully, when you win gold, you can cash in on it, and not sell yeah, it. That's true. <laughs> yeah, straight away. <laughs> Need to get back this morning. Have to sell it. This is from Rosie Crampen. Are you aware you're hilarious, or do you genuinely, genuinely not try to be funny? <laughs> no, don't even, Rosie. Don't even go there. I'm not. It's just a no. <laughs> I don't. I don't. John will say that I'm trying to be like. I'm really lame. Uh, this is from Improve Runners. Why did you choose this sport? Um, well, my dad did it when he was younger. And then I would just do, I don't know. I just thought it seemed a good idea. Good laugh. I mean, that's it was fun, isn't it? It's quite challenging. I don't know. I just really enjoyed it. And then I got addicted like like every triathlete. When they write a biography, uh, a book on your life, um, the question will be, why did you do triathlon? And your your answer will be, thought it'd be a laugh. <laughs> Listen, there's going to be no book, I'm telling you. <laughs> so we won't worry about that. <laughs> Christ almighty. Uh, work at it. Uh, thank you. Are you tapping the table? Yeah, sorry. John just for that. Not helping on that. Thank you very much. That's another week of Ask Our Jess. Thank you, Jess. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Ask our Jess. Oh, she is an absolute pisser. And like she just said, she has no idea. She uh, thinks that she's lame every day and that we are just sitting here laughing at her, which, I mean, I can't comment on her being lame. However, I can definitely, definitely say that we're here laughing at her because she's an absolute crack up. Uh, let's get back into bits and pieces. But before we do, don't forget to send us any questions for Jess so we can include them in next week's episode of Ask, Ask Our Jess. It's terrible. Uh, Carrots has just said, also, any comments on, out of Iron Man? Oh, hang on a second. Sue has just said volume up. I don't know why I'm having so many issues. Uh, Carrots has just said, any comments out of Iron Man uh, around the qualification and continued travel bans around the world? Nothing yet uh, from head office. Um, <laughs> Sid has just said that my uh, attempt at speaking like Jess was terrible and I'll own it. It was terrible. Uh, Carrots, nothing yet. Um but to be honest, I haven't asked the question either. Uh, I'm sure we'll find out more in the coming weeks and months. What do you think? What do you think uh, Iron Man Hawaii will go ahead? What are your thoughts? Maybe we can leave that question for next week. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, okay. I think we've just about got everything uh, that we need for this week. Um, thanks, Sue. Sorry about that just having so many issues um we just had a software update on the program that i'm using and uh yes so made a few mistakes today apologies for that all right we're gonna get moving on um i guess in the next couple of weeks keep an eye out for some new babies to be born i know uh the likes of sarah pew pew pian piano is due any moment now so I imagine we're going to be seeing some brand new triathlon babies any day now. Uh, last week, we also saw Daniela Blamel uh, announce her pregnancy as well. Uh, so congratulations to her and her family. Jordan's just said Hawaii, Hawaii might just be very American, need a vax to participate. Yeah, I mean, Hawaii is kind of living in a bit of a bubble as well, aren't they? They, I mean, especially Kona, I guess, um, are very COVID-free compared to the rest of the states. Uh, so, yeah, who knows? I guess it depends as well, even down the track. I don't know. It depends on how vac vaccines roll out across the world. Um, what What is the cost of 
coming back to your country. So uh, who was I chatting to the other day? Um, and anyone who knows, but two weeks quarantine back here uh, in Australia, if you have to leave and come back, is, uh, you know, you're looking at 4000 around $4,000, I believe, uh, obviously depending on where you go. Um, yeah, to quarantine for two weeks at your expense. Sid has just said, if the Olympics aren't mandating vaccines, not sure any other competition can. Um, Jordan says, most of the US will be vaccinated by June. The other thing with the Olympics as well, um, you know, I'm curious to get your thoughts, your thoughts too. Um, so if, 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 say, the Olympics can go, go, ahead, go ahead this year, uh, how how would you how would you like to witness the Olympics? Because I imagine they will put you know max numbers on on media, for example. So the the typical photos that you see that come out of come out of the Olympics and um, video content, live content, all of that will come to a minimum. Uh, so it'll be just just from that side of things, it'll be interesting to see what happens in terms of how the Olympics is streamed across the globe um, or how we consume it as an audience. Uh, lots to think about. There's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts to the Olympics, obviously, um, and Paralympics. I shouldn't forget the Paralympics. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I think every day changes. We don't we don't really know. Um, Jordan has just said also, but Hawaii might demand it. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, they they appear to have been in a bit of a bubble for quite some time in Hawaii in comparison to the rest of the states. And yeah, why would you why would you want to upset that uh, upset that bubble, burst that bubble, in fact? Uh, okay, lots to consider. Few things to chat about. Um, oh no, sorry, one more thing. We received two more uh, two books uh, this last week that I need to start getting my reading on, which is very hard because I'm not a massive reader. I do enjoy it. I just never make the time to do it. Uh, but I received two books this week. First one, let's see if it will focus on that. There we go. So that is Hardwire Life and Death and Life Death and Triathlon uh, by Emma Carney. Uh, so interested to give that a read. Uh, and then the second one is this one. Let's see if it focuses on that one. So that is by Catherine Bertine, who uh, was one of the women who was pivotal in the La Course, which was the uh, women's race as a part of La Tour de France. Uh, she was one of the women who was pivotal in making that event happen. Uh, and, you know, is a constant fighter for equality in sport and so forth. I've read three pages, which I think is the pre... Do you call it a prelog? Hang on a second. Um, what's it called? Um, the preface. There you go. Um, I've read the, the pre preface or preface? Preface? Anyway of this book, three pages, I mean, and that's all I've read. I haven't even actually started chapter one uh, and already it's resonating with me. So what we're going to do is tee up a podcast with both of those women, which I'm really looking forward to. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I've already got, after, like I said, three pages in, I've already got at least three questions to throw Catherine's way. So once I finish that, we're going to look at getting a podcast started. I'm even thinking with Catherine's uh, podcast, we might even do a live version for our Wits Up Patreon members. So if you are a Patreon member, look out for a message from me uh, this week. We might do a live version of that one. So you can ask Catherine questions as well because she's got a lot to say. She's done a lot. Uh, she's an incredible woman. Uh, and of course, the Emma Carney book as well. And I'll be giving you all some feedback about that and also getting Emma Carney on the podcast too. But I'm going to wait until I've at least read uh, those books before we get those women on the podcast. Uh, Sue Hutter has just said, Jordan, most of Idaho, 80% are anti-vaxxers. So I'm not sure about that. Um, Jordan's writing on behalf of Wits Up. The ones that want them will is what I should have said. Okay. Um, those those two are having a discussion. 
they don't need me to butt in. Uh, anyway, so things to look forward to are those bits and pieces. I'm going to love you and leave you. I hope you all have uh, a great day, what's left of it. And um, I'm going to see what I can organise for this evening's seven-year anniversary celebrations. Take care and I will speak to you all next week. <laughs>